All right, we are interrupting that report for some breaking inputs which have just come where both houses of the Indian Parliament have been adjourned till tomorrow. No confidence motion has been stalled yet again. Remember, there have been parties which have been demanding that the no confidence motion should be tabled in the House. However, that has not happened again. The opposition parties have jumped into the well of the House, which has resulted in both houses of the Parliament being adjourned till tomorrow. And for more on this, we are joined in by our senior political affairs editor, Kartikeya Sharma. Kartikeya, what's the latest on the story? All right, Kartikeya, uh, if, if I can come to you again. Now, what's exactly playing out here? There are opposition parties who want the no-confidence motion to actually uh, take place in the House, but still there is a lot of ruckus that's been created, and now we see that both houses of the Parliament have been adjourned. See, my idea is that today the government uh, readied itself for a no-confidence motion, perhaps because they wanted the debate to shift away from the Dalit issue, because, you know, that's like an Achilles of Bharti Janta party. But... Uh, opposition maintained its position on the Dalit uh, issue and sacrificed the no confidence motion because if you had the no confidence motion mm -hmm. you know, then you wouldn't have been able to take up the uh, issue of STSC Act. So the, uh, the Congress also changed the gear. They, they went for the uh, STSC issue rather than uh, stick with the earlier demand of no confidence motion. And this time the ADMK MPs were not disturbing the House. So the right. whole issue was that the earlier the, the government itself was not interested, but this time the government was interested, the opposition was not interested. So uh, the, I think this session is a washout session on Friday. Uh, it's going to uh, get cyanide. You know, Kartikeya, it's very interesting the manner in which the strategies that have been employed both by the government and also by the opposition parties. Earlier, the government was not very keen on the debate, but now today, because of the protests that we've seen, widespread protests uh, or the SCST issue, the government, as you mentioned, uh, was keen on having a debate. But how do you see this proceeding further? Because we do not expect the SCST uh, protests to die down soon, anytime soon. See, I, uh, my, my idea is that this, this has to do with Karnataka elections. Mm -hmm. uh, you would know that in Karnataka, the backward caste uh, combination is almost like Bihar. Mm -hmm. So if all the backward caste support you, uh, which is Madhyars, the Holiars, mm -hmm. like for example, Holiar is like the, the creamier layer of the backwards, uh, Malik Arjun Kharge belongs to it. So if there's a consolidation, which, and including the Lingayat, which now does not consider themselves as part of the Sanatan Dharv, then mm -hmm. Congress sweeps the election. So I, I think it's, it's the redefining of the politics and understanding the Congress is having that mm -hmm. they will have to replicate Bihar model right. uh, in most of the states in case they want to be a challenge to BJP because BJP's uh, nationalism, what it does is that it creates a sort of a glue for these dominant castes and the upper caste. Right. And it uh, so, uh, dependent on seat to seat basis. So Congress is trying to create a counter narrative where the base will not be nationalism, it will be the backward caste politics and then rest will be like incremental right. seat to seat basis. You know, it's interesting that you brought out this, this politics of the backward caste. Now, Sidramaya in 2013, when he had won the election, it was essentially what he had said was, uh, you know, a combination of Ahinda caste, the backward caste who'd voted for him. And that was the reason as to why he had been able to come to power in 2013. Now, with the Dalit agitation picking up speed, do you see a major impact of this in the Karnataka polls, which will take place in mid-May? I think it will have a major impact on Karnataka polls, but please remember that you know what they can do in Karnataka may have a may have a may have a uh, different impact in other parts. You know what is good for you in one state may not be good for you the other state. Right. So the whole backward caste and the Lingayat politics might rebound in uh, UP, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar. So the Congress will have to also factor in the potential of the debate right. because it's not in today's world, in today's connectivity. You know, you, you cannot fight elections on local issues not let and think the other state will not be affected by it. It's not 60s or 70s. You know, some some would say state, that the BJP could actually do it with a certain set of politics in, in UP, Bihar and the Cowbell that are completely a different agenda in the Northeast and they were able to pull it off very successfully there. 
Absolutely. For, they, they completely changed the game in North East and that is why the North East which used to be the bastion for the Congress party. Now today Congress is nowhere. But they, they, there is a revival of the Congress not in terms of organization but in terms of uh, aggression, right. in terms of social media campaign and the changeover which is taking place within the Congress party. But I would say that what's happening in Karnataka is not because there is a renewal of the Congress at a larger organizational basis. What is happening in Karnataka is primarily because of Siddharamaya. It's like Punjab election. Right. R Gujarat was one election where Rahul Gandhi was the face. In Karnataka, Rahul Gandhi is not the face. Rahul Gandhi is pushing the case of Siddharamaya, who already has become a symbol of regional pride. You know, Siddharamaya, I would say, is the third chief minister in past 20 years who symbolizes this sentiment. The first was Narendra Modi, then came Nitish Kumar, and then uh, Siddharamaya. This used to be in 70s, 80s and 60s when you had chief ministers like N.T. Ramarao or Karuna Nidhi or K. Karuna Karan in, uh, in Kerala or Vaisar Reddy in uh, Andhra Pradesh or Bordoloi in Assam, that was a different era. But I, right. I would say that this time, you know, you have those couple of chief ministers. It's not like, you know, you have Sheikh Abdullah. Mm -hmm. um, Sheikh Abdullah also had to spend uh, a lot of time behind the bars. But the larger point I'm trying to make uh, for our audiences that Karnataka elections cannot be limited to the elections of one state. Karnataka elections will have a national ramification. In the history of Karnataka, no chief minister has completed, uh, uh, has, been, has got the double tenure. Siddharamaya will break that if he gets it. Second, uh, a party which wins election in Karnataka always loses it in uh, centre. Right. This has been there for 30 years. And lastly, if Siddharamaya and Rahul Gandhi retakes Karnataka, it will be a defining movement for Congress from its shift from Dalit, Brahmin and Muslim, which, is, which, was, the, which was the alliance forged by Indra Gandhi, to a Dalit-led pol Dalit politics, which is very, very different. Absolutely, indeed. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much, indeed, Karthike Shamash, for joining us with that perspective. Interesting days ahead as to how this protest that has been initiated by the SEs and STs will actually pan out and as to how it would also impact the elections that are coming forth in several states across India.